Learning to program reactively with RxJS and observables can be a little bit confusing and hard to wrap your head around initially. There are a ton of operators that you can use and it's not always intuitive what exactly they do. So in this video, I'm going to walk through three different approaches you can use to help understand what operators are doing. So my first point of call is always using LearnRx. So if you come to learnrxjs.io, you can browse through all the different operators here. Usually I'll just do a Google search for LearnRx and then whatever it is that I'm interested in. But let's look for something like a merge map, which can be a little bit difficult to understand. So we can come here first and we can just get a basic description of what this does. So we get some good quick pointers here and then we get an explanation of why we would use a merge map. So it says this operator is best used when you wish to flatten an inner observable, but want to manually control the number of inner subscriptions. So we can go on to read about what exactly a merge map is in more detail. We can see examples of usage, but in the case of a merge map, it still might be the case that even with this overview and description and some example code, we might not fully understand what is happening here. So my next point of call is the RxJS documentation itself. So again, we can just search for whatever it was that we were interested in, in this case, uh, merge map. And I find that the RxJS documentation gives a bit more of a technical definition of what is happening. And as well as that, we also get these marble diagrams, which can also be a little bit confusing to understand initially, but once you get the basic idea of what's happening in this diagram, it can really help to illustrate what is happening with various operators. So in this marble diagram here, what we have is an observable stream that's emitting three values, a one, a three, and a five. And then we have another stream here that is going to emit three values, a 10, a 10, and a 10. And what this stream at the bottom is, is the merged map stream that we're interested in. So you can see here, this is an example where we're using a merge map. We're taking the value from our first stream and then we're multiplying that value by 10. So what is actually happening here is that every time this first stream emits a value, we are going to subscribe to this second stream and then we're going to multiply the values of this stream by the value that was emitted in that stream. And you can see the result of that here where we get 10, 10, 10. Then our next value emitted is a three. And so again, we create a new subscription to this uh, stream here, and then we multiply those values together. So we get 30, 30, 30. But one important thing about a merge map here is that you can see that now this is overlapping with our third data emission. So when this bit of data gets emitted, we again subscribe to this stream and we start emitting those values but we're gonna start emitting those values before the second one has finished emitting its values. So you can see from this marble diagram that we can have values overlapping like that. Now, just as a quick additional example here, just to give a bit of a comparison, if we bring up a concat map, which in a sense is uh, similar to a merge map, we can see the difference in the marble diagram. So we have this exact same sort of setup where we have this uh, second stream that we're subscribing to, and we have our initial stream that's emitting one, three, and five. We're multiplying the values together. And we again have this situation where this last value is overlapping with the second value because uh, left to right here is sort of time passing. But in this case, we don't have this resulting stream. We don't have the values overlapped. So that third emission is going to wait until the previous inner observable has completed before it starts emitting its values. So I get that these marble diagrams can be very confusing to look at. And I don't know if I just did a terrible job of trying to uh, verbally explain what's going on here, but hopefully you can see that if you can sort of get your head around these diagrams, they are an excellent tool for understanding what each operator is actually doing. Now, the last tool that I like to use or website uh, is thinkrx.io. There is this RxJS playground, which is really great for again, seeing those marble diagrams and also having a bit of a play around yourself. So let's stick with that merge map example. So I'm gonna open up merge map here 
And you can see we have a similar sort of example to the last one. Uh, this time there isn't actually any multiplication happening here. We are just, whenever we get that data emitting from the first stream, we just subscribe to a stream that emits 0, 1, 2. So then we get the second data here and then we subscribe and we get 0, 1, 2, get the last one, 0, 1, 2. So the cool thing about uh, the RxJS playground here is that we can actually modify the example. And there is a bit of extra logic going on here to help create this diagram and colorize the uh, marbles, for example. Uh, but we can still modify this to suit whatever example we're interested in. So I might go ahead and add an additional data emission there. So now we have a 30 as well. And for this second stream that we're subscribing to, again, I could modify that one. I could just uh, change this to one, for example. So that's going to cause the data emissions to happen much more quickly. And we're still just taking three uh, data emissions. Uh, we could change this to uh, six to get a few more in there, spread them out a bit by increasing that time back up again. And we can get all sorts of stuff going on here. And I could also even add my own observable streams to this. So wherever we subscribe, it's using RX Observer. And then that's going to paint out this marble diagram for us. So let's say we don't want to merge map or maybe we want to compare what happens between the concat map and a merge map. So I might just add an ex uh, extra example here and say const concat map equals, and we can just really just steal all that example code there, except we'll change that to concat map instead. We'll need to make sure to import that operator. And then down here in the visualization section, we can subscribe to that as well. So we'll say concat map dot subscribe, and then make sure we pass in that RX observer so we can actually get that stuff uh, painted out. And then we can just give it a title. I'm not gonna bother putting a good title in there because all I really wanna see is how this works. I'm actually gonna go back and we'll change these back to three because it's a bit easier to see what's going on. And I will just give that a title of concat map and so now we can see the difference between what's happening with the merge map and the can, uh, concat map in the same scenario. So we can clearly see with the merge map, we have these values overlapping when this source stream emits its values, the merge map will just immediately subscribe and start emitting the values from the inner observable. But with our concat map, it doesn't start emitting those values until the previous inner observable has completed. And so this example is mostly exactly the same. As you can see, the two, the merge map and the concat map examples look almost identical, except for this little overlap section here. And depending on what your code is doing, it might be either very important that you wait until the previous inner observable had completed before you do something, or it might be important that you run those subscriptions as soon as you can. So if you're having some problems in your code, doing some debugging, not sure why something is happening, you can kind of run some simulations in here to really understand what is happening with those operators. And just as one little bonus tip at the end here, another tool that is really useful is the operator decision tree, which is basically just a little wizard questionnaire thing that can help you determine what operator you might need to use. So you can just answer these questions and it will tell you what you most likely should be using. So I might say, I have some observables to combine together as one observable and I want to be notified when all of them have completed and it tells me that I want the fork join operator. So this can be a great little tool to use if you're not sure what operator to even use in the first place. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.